Hey, how's it going, guys? Captain Kuba here, and welcome to a video that has been in, in that has been anticipated by a lot of people in this channel for a long time now. My reaction video to Under the Mayo's critique of God of War 2018. This is a video he uploaded back in 2018, I'm pretty sure, and essentially he's like the the leading YouTuber figure that you know hates God of War 2018. Everybody who calls God of War 2018 a slow game, uh, walking simulator. Like, their leader is under the mayo. This is a video that I've been wanting to watch for a long time, but sadly I just haven't had the time. For one thing, is one hour long, so I haven't really had time to, you know, make time for it. Um, but I wanted to watch it because God of War Ragnarok is surely approaching, like the release date is about to come out. And I wanted to see what his original critique of the game was. I haven't seen many of his videos, I think I watched his Doom Eternal video, and also the God of War Ragnarok revealed him saying that he was disappointed. I thought it was pretty funny because he said he was expecting some major changes like a jump button, Atreus to be like 20 years old. And as someone who knows the lore of the game, I, I knew like at least the an older Atreus just wasn't gonna happen. And a jump button was just simply going to be too big of a formula change for what Santa Monica created in 2018. So I don't mean this, I don't mean to create this reaction video to create some beef between me and Under the Mayo. Uh, I'm pretty sure him and I are going to agree on a lot of things because lately I've been thinking more critically about God of War 2018 and I still love it. I'm not changing my mind about that, but I'm considering whether it's the best game in the series because it, it, it does it does miss out on a lot of things like enemy variety, like boss battles. So I'm thinking that maybe as the God of War series stands right now, I think God of War 2 might be better because it's a more balanced game. Like for the hack and slasher genre, like it was like... It was peak. It was right there. Like it was. It's the best in the series, right? But God of War 2018 is very close behind, if that. Like it, to me, it's it's between those games right now. So I wanted to react to this video to see what he thinks about it, because I've I've honestly never watched this review before, and I wanted to see what he thought about it. And under the mayo, if you're watching this, man, if you want to come over for a pot of cast and just talk about God of War, I would love to have you over, man. Let's just. It, I don't have to invite people to just like the God of War series as it is right now. I can, it can be a debate type of thing. You know, we can argue <laughs> in a friendly manner. But anyway, let's just cut this rambling and start the reaction video. God of War 2018 is considered by many to be the best game of the year. Even the game of this generation. A defining moment in the history of gaming, setting the standard for all that follow. But for me, it was a disappointment a tedious slog that tricked audiences into loving it through its technical achievements and pretentiousness. It's gonna be a long one, so grab a drink and a snack and get ready to get angry. This is how God of War was ruined. Well, I have to talk about this first because I'm, I'm kind of getting the sense of what games he likes uh, from just one thing he said. He said that God of War 2018 was pretentious. I want to see what he says about that. But I'm, get, I'm getting the feeling that, again, I haven't really watched that many of his stuff, but I'm getting the feeling that he likes games that are, um, for the most part, mechanics-focused. I'm guessing, like, Doom Eternal. I know that's one of his favorite ones, right? Um, I can't really think of any games right now, but he's most, he's a guy that mostly likes uh, mechanics games, right? Like the, 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 He doesn't really... I, I'm going to get this feeling that he doesn't really care too much about the story of the game as opposed to the gameplay, right? And that's something that him and I kind of disagree with, I think. I think gameplay, of course, should be first, but right behind it, it, it should be like story. Like, they're so close that it's almost undistinguishable. Like, it, it, they, they're so close to me that it's almost a tie, right? But I get the feeling that him calling the game pretentious, it just, it just shows that he doesn't really care about the cutscenes, like the moments of Curtis getting the blades, none of that. He cares only about the gameplay. But anyway, let's see, I'm judging him before I, I get to listen to what he thinks about. This is going to be a long video, so sit back and enjoy, guys. Man, this is loud. So, before we break this disaster down, let's look at what made the God of War series so great in the first place. A little bit of history. March 2005, I first heard of God of War when I saw the GameSpot review. A 9.3 score, and the game looked so fun that I immediately drove out to buy it. From the very start of the game, you know you're in for a ride. The fire, the epic musical theme, 
and that iconic opening line. The gods of Olympus have abandoned me. It was. Now, now there is no hope. Kratos is an instantly fascinating character. His look, his voice, and the sadness that pours through his expression as he throws himself into the sea. This game wastes no time in getting started. After a three weeks earlier setup, you find yourself on a ship in a thunderstorm, surrounded by monsters, the legendary Hydra destroying other ships in the background. Here you are allowed to experiment with the game's excellent combat system, one that is infuriatingly described by some as button mashing. Oh, you just mashed square all day. Not really. Let's get into it. Six presses of square, the light attack button, will perform a simple combo and finishing hit. If you incorporate the heavy attack button, triangle, the combo will end in a heavy smash. And mashing these combos will get you through some of the game, sure. But if you don't learn to change it up and use other attacks and guard, you will start to get punished hard and you'll get wrecked on higher difficulties where a collection of three enemy attacks will take you down. That's okay. That's okay. I'm sure he's going to talk about this more in the future, but I can see that he's the one who recorded that gameplay because he's already starting to kind of change the narrative a little bit. In any game you play, you can always play it as simplistic as you want. He said there that, you know, if you only use like square, square, triangle or square, 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 like you will get punished through, but not really at the same time. My wife, who at the time was my girlfriend, played God of War 1, and she had this phrase that it was like square, square, square supremacy. She spent the entire game playing with square, 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 square. And that was possibly because games allow you to do that, right? Like you, Dark Souls is one of the few games that really punishes you for playing the same way and not, you know, changing your variety and stuff. You can do the same thing with God of War 2018. You can press R1, R1, R1. And in God of, War, God of War 2005, you can do square, 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 triangle and, you know, beat the game like that if you want to. Is it going to be fun? No, not really. So I already disagree with something he says. If you don't care about the, if you don't care about the world or the story, which is why I think story is so tied to gameplay. If you don't care about the world, if you don't care about the story, you're going to play the game in a boring manner. I never play God of War uh, 1 in a boring manner because I, I love the characters, I love the world, right? And I did combos and all that. And the same applies to God of War 2018. You don't do as many combos, but I'm sure he's going to talk about it later, so I'm just going to wait for now and just talk about it, okay? The heavy attack button launches light enemies into air juggles, and holding it launches enemies higher, followed by Kratos auto-jumping into the air for a focused line of attack. In the air, you can use a series of light attacks, heavy attacks to bounce more enemies into the air, or use grab, the circle button, to keep the enemy airborne and do focus damage. Mix it together for a fun time. As you progress, you unlock different attacks used in conjunction with the block button. Longer animation attacks that add style or effectiveness to your fighting technique. Horizontal and vertical spinning attacks that do many hits through long animations. And heavy smashing attacks that do massive damage or hit enemies all around you. And God of War 3 takes it to a whole new level by introducing the grapple attack. A good interruption to enemy animations and a great source of mobility. I, I, I freaking love that move, which is why I screamed when I saw it in the God of War Ragnarok trailer. I don't know, I don't remember if he was happy about that, but that move is coming back in God of War Ragnarok and it has me super excited. If you're able to continue your hits without getting hit yourself or stopping for too long, you build your combo meter. The more consecutive hits you get in a combo, the more red orbs you get. And you need orbs to upgrade your weapons and magic. It's a risk though, as enemies will not respect your attempts to build hits. A multi-hit grab or a long spinning animation could be interrupted by an incoming attack, ending your hit accumulation. The spinning attacks give many hits to your counter, especially when surrounded, but you cannot stop the animation to block. You must commit to it and be careful. If you're just mashing it, you'll get hit. And on higher difficulties, that means you die fast, especially since hit stun allows multiple enemies to brutalize you in turn before you can recover. So you have to play smart, control the fight, and integrate multi-hit fancy attacks when you can get them. I do think it's funny that he's using the God of War 2018 soundtrack in the back. <laughs> I'm not saying this proves anything, but I do think it's interesting that 
the the music of God of War 2018 does for better like background videos. <laughs> I just I thought it was funny. I'm not, I'm not claiming anything by it. Get away with it. The grounded grab circle is a fabulous mechanic as it gives you the option of a throwing the enemy at the others to give you some space. You can target different enemies to take out a specific threat too. This is your strategic control option. B, insta-killing to take out an annoying threat with a brutal kill. Starting with God of War 2, this and other grab kills give a reward of five orbs, making this option much more useful. And C, punching multiple times, which adds to your combo meter. You can use this option to push your combo meter just a little bit higher at the end of a fight to try for a higher orb bonus. Large enemies give prompts for minigames that lead to savage kill animations. And not for nothing, you are awarded extra orbs for these kills. And certain enemies may give you health afterwards, like the Minotaur, or magic from the Medusas or the Sirens. And as the game progresses, there are so many different monster types that the minigames usually feel fun to do because you don't encounter the same large enemy constantly. And these games do a great job of making you hate these enemies and really feel the rage inside of Kratos. So there's a primal satisfaction in shoving your blade into a minotaur's mouth or ripping the eyeball out of a cyclops. It truly is, yeah. That's true. It does feel really good. This is important. Do you see what the game is doing? The game is actively encouraging you to have fun and be flashy. It's incentivizing you to use multi-hit moves by tying their riskiness directly to the benefit of your combo hit counter, which rewards you for being creative and not stopping. And but why didn't my my wife at the time didn't do it? That's that's gonna be like my. I feel like it's gonna be a reoccurring question for him. In this, oh, it's part one. There's a part two. I just realized that. Uh, my wife didn't do that. She just played. She she played the game with square, 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 square. And my argument is that she doesn't care about the God of War world as much as I do, right? And I'm guessing he liked this older Kratos style as well, right? The mo I, I'm willing to bet anything that the moment he saw the he saw the kid in the game, that was a huge turnoff for him. Okay, that was like the thing is like, oh, this game is just trying to be the Last of Us. Like I'm. Again, I'm prejudging him, but I feel like that's where he's going with this, okay? I feel like he saw Atreus for the first time in the God of War 20, uh, 2016 E3 demo, and he's like, no, this game's gonna be bad no matter what. But anyway, let's let's just get to that, okay? And the minigame kills benefit your health, magic, and orbs, as well as serving as a release for your tension. The heavy attacks are there for when you just need something to die, and then a grab mixed in can help control the fight space or give a brutal kill. Magic gets added into the mix beautifully as lightning spells control space and multi-hit. Medusa's gaze freezes enemies and gives large brutal kill orb bonuses as enemies shatter. Zeus's lightning bolt can multi-hit and effectively eliminate a targeted threat. And the other games follow this design and improve on it. God of War 2 has the Kronos orbs and the Typhon Windbow and much better flashy attack animations. God of War 3, along with the amazing grapple, gives a bow and arrow as a separate ability apart from the magic. And there are four different weapons to use, featuring advantages in power, magic, and multi-hit ability. God of War 3 also allows you to switch weapons mid-attack and finally gives you a lot of reasons to switch constantly. Not only are there great reasons to switch weapons, but it's also incredibly fun, and you'll want to switch weapons because you're having a great time. That's true. I, I still think God of War 3 has like the best combat in the series still. I a lot of issues I have with God of War 2018 is that it's it was the first game of that, you know, type of formula. Like there was they were still testing things out. They're gonna iron them out in God of War Ragnarok, right? But God of War 3 was like the you know, the peak of hack and slasher combat, at least in the God of War series. And I loved it. I agree with them. I loved God of War 3's combat as well. It's just fantastic design. Visually, the games are brilliant, beautiful, and inspired. All those amazing locations, and the scenery is always changing. Ships at sea in a storm, Hades, Mount Olympus, the Titan Atlas, swimming sections... That's something I've recently changed my mind about God of War 2018. Not changed my mind, but I've realized it. I'm like, oh, God of War 2018 does feel kind of 
plain when it comes to the environments, right? Like Midgard has sections that look beautiful, but most of them, they just look like a forest, right? They're not as interesting to look at. That's why maybe I gravitate towards Alfheim as being one of my favorite locations. Alfheim looks so mythical, you know, like so mythological is what I meant to say. And I feel like this problem is going to be fixed with God of War Ragnarok as well, because we're going to get access to Svartalheim, the realm of the dwarves. We're going to see Asgard as well. We're going to see all of these realms and they're going to change it because I, I will agree with them on this. I think that's where he's going with. I do think the environments in God of War 2018 were kind of plain because Midgard is a forest. Um, Muspelheim is a, is a volcano. It, it, what else? Nilfheim is very boring looking as well. It's just like yellow and there's mist and all that. Environmentally wise, I think God of War 2 is still the best. You get the Sisters of Fate Temple. You get uh, the the what was it called the the Bog of the Forgotten, like that forest with the the poison, the acid rivers and stuff. God of War 2 just looks amazing when it comes to locales, at least. But I think this is gonna be fixed in God of War Ragnarok. The steeds of time. Yeah. The pits of Tartarus. The caverns. Pandora's temple. Athens, the desert of lost souls, the Titan Gaia, the labyrinth, flying across the sea, so many vivid scenes and meticulously framed. The fixed camera, while limiting the player's perspective, allows the game to have a truly cinematic presentation and sells the epic scope of the adventure. Kratos is small when set against this intimidatingly large world. Combat is also commonly framed by a distant, angular, often overhead camera. This allows the player to have full sight of the battlefield. You see what enemies intend to do and where they are, giving you the time to decide to roll, jump, activate magic, or block. Importantly, block is universal and auto guards against attacks from all directions. So you're fighting and all the while you're able to admire the beautiful scenes in the background and the design of the level because you're not distracted by having to move the camera all the time or watch for flashing indicators. In addition to great combat and visuals, there's exploration. It's a linear game. Okay. There are lots of little hidden areas with bonuses for health and magic upgrades. Okay, sure. Yeah, there's hidden places, but... He's not really going to argue that there's more exploration in the older God of War games than in 2018. That's that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Come on. God of War 2018 is semi-open compared to these games. But let's see where he goes with this. Kratos has a classic platforming double jump. He can climb many surfaces and ledges, scale walls quickly, and explore odd angles looking for treasure. There are lots of clever little secrets hidden, and many include having to think creatively and jump and climb. God of War 2 and 3 introduced the wings of Icarus, which you brutally rip from his back. Now able to glide long distances, the games start to feel even larger. Boss fights are epic, sometimes involving puzzle elements like climbing boxes to impale the Hydra or freezing and breaking the mirror in the Sisters of Fate fight. Yeah, I, I do. I do. There's something that has, has been kind of lost with the God of War series as, as it has gone on. Like, even in God of War 3, you don't really get this as much. But the earlier God of War boss fights had, like, a puzzle element to them. And I loved it. Like, in the Minotaur in uh, God of War 1, you had to use the Ballista to take the, the, the boss down. Like he mentions here, the Sisters of Fate. You have to use the mirrors and stop time. It's, it's, it's kind of what makes the what used to make the boss fights in God of War special. But that has been a tradition that has been slowly slowly getting lost in the God of War series, right? It's not to say I, I don't like God of War 2018 bosses, it's just different. Even in God of War 3, they're more about, they're more Devil May Cry-ish, you know, they're more like about doing combos and like uh, learning the enemy patterns, but they've gotten they've gotten rid of the, the whole puzzle element to it. Hercules. Zeus. The Colossus. The Minotaur, Ares, Kronos, Hades, Perseus, yep, Poseidon, okay. 
the Barbarian King. They're all so good, and the games do a great job of making you hate these characters but, so much that you want to see them dead. But, okay, um, the Magni and Modi boss fight was pretty good. The Dragon boss fight was pretty good too. Sigrun was an amazing boss fight, arguably the best boss fight in the series. I'll give you that the final fight with Baldur is a little bit simplistic, but at least it's got like that classic cinematic God of War style, you know, like, I don't, they're just different boss fights, like he's just, I guess he's just trying to, you know, get you hyped up about all the number of boss fights you had in the previous games, which is something I think we're going to get a lot in God of War Ragnarok, they're, the number's going to go up, I just know it. Especially Ares and Zeus. Speaking of puzzles, these games have plenty of them. Not so hard that they ruin your fun, and usually not so easy that it's obvious in five seconds. Construct a wall, maneuver the box before the spikes kill you, swimming quickly to avoid traps, <laughs> Hera's garden using weird visual manipulation to create pathways. I do miss these puzzles as well. Um, they're like larger scale puzzles that God of War 2018 simply didn't have. The closest one I got to was that wolf, like uh, the... the what is it? Skull and Hati puzzle in Tears Temple. And I hated that thing. I really did because it was timed. And it's just, it wasn't as fun. It was just like telling Atreus to pull on the levers, right? But uh, I do like the smaller puzzles, which are like, oh, you pull the chain down, you freeze the thing. They're simplistic, but they're used to kind of break the, the pacing a little bit. Not break the pacing, but to do uh, better the pacing, I would say. It's like, oh, it's just, instead of just like killing enemies, like you do this little thing, you know? It's like, it, it's not, they're not too complicated that you're going to spend like 30 minutes trying to figure it out but it's like it, it makes you think for a little bit so i think in god of war ragnarok they just need to mix both of them they need to have what they had in god of war 2018 with the smaller puzzles and also like three bigger puzzles like harris garden which is one of the best ones in the series if not the best using time travel to prevent suicide <laughs> pass through portals to unlock secrets the ice melting puzzle Open the architect's tomb and cross the platforms. Raise the grapple hooks and freeze time to cross the rooms. And the story is fantastic. Kratos, the greatest Spartan warrior, sells his soul to Ares, the god of war, in exchange for victory in the face of defeat against the barbarian king. In service of Ares, Kratos' thirst for blood leads him right into Ares' trap, and in a blind rage, he accidentally kills his wife and daughter, severing his emotional ties to the world, to forever be Ares' servant. The town oracle curses Kratos to be eternally covered in the ashes of his dead family, always reminded of his sin. He turns his back on Ares and swears allegiance to Zeus and the other gods of Olympus, serving them for years in exchange for their forgiveness. When Ares lays siege to Athens, the gods must stop him, but are forbidden from intervening directly. Thus Kratos is tasked with finding Pandora's box to obtain the power to stop Ares, which will end his service to the gods and finally win their forgiveness. This takes him through Athens, the desert of lost souls, the back of the Titan Kronos, Pandora's temple, and the underworld Hades, leading to the final confrontation. All the while, we are fed pieces of this story, paced out like a good mystery. You finally do battle with Ares, including a surreal dream fight where you battle your own guilt and protect your family from yourself, even going so far as to allow you to transfer health to them by hugging them. Ultimately, Ares falls, and while you are forgiven of your sins, the gods will not let you forget. Kratos must still be tormented by the memory of what he's done, which he can't handle. So he steps off a cliff to die, but is then rescued from death as the gods need Kratos to take over as the new god of war, a mortal given godly status and power to forever watch over and guide the wars of man. So don't... Wait, wait, I want to see what he says right there. Tell me that the new God of War finally gives the series a good story. The original games, especially the first one, have fantastic stories filled with drama, character, emotion, and an epic sense of adventure. And I don't know if people have just willfully forgotten 
or if they're actively being dishonest by lying about the nature of these games' stories, combat, and everything else. But just because Kratos isn't walking around all depressed with a child next to him, I doesn't knew it. mean that these games deserve to be dismissed. I, I knew it. I, I knew that was his issue. You know, like walking around like this. Be, I knew that was going to be his issue. Hold on. So I want to I want to talk about the whole story thing, right? He says that the older God of War games had a good story, and I I, I can see that it was being a little bit sneaky. For one thing, he did say that especially God of War One. It's true. Out of all the older games, God of War One has the best story. But I'm about to blow your mind. God of War One doesn't really have an amazing story. It has an amazing backstory. In the game itself, you don't really get that much of a character, a classic character arc. You know, it's just environments, and within the environments, you get flashbacks to his story, which is a really interesting story. The same happens with God of War 2. Nothing really happens in the story of the game. He's just trying to turn back time. What you get, how you get interested in the story is, it's just a backstory. It's what happened between the gods and the titans. The backstory of Zeus, how he betrayed Kronos and the other uh, titans. It's not really in the story. In God of War 2018, you actually have a good story in the game as it's it's not just a backstory it's got the backstory but it's also got a good story you get atreus who's a character that's always with you and you're always talking same with mimir you're not just a killing machine the older god of war games gave you scenarios just so you know you could plow through them just fight enemies and all that there wasn't really much progression in the story you would always get most of the story right at the beginning and right at the end in the middle it was just like scenarios for you to fight God of War 2018 has, like, gameplay and story interwoven throughout the whole experience. That's why moments like getting the blades back have such have resonated with fans so much. It's because the story is happening as it's going on, not just a backstory. But I do agree. God of War has always had an interesting story. It's just that I think God of War 2018 tells a better story. Here we go. All right, now that we appreciate what made the original series so great, let's compare them to the new God of War. From the very beginning, we have a very stark contrast in tone. No epic music, and there's an option for easy mode which says, give me a story. To me, this reveals that the creators have prioritized story and experience over gameplay. Maybe that's fine for something like The Last of Us, but not here. It's kind of a red flag. But I don't know why people rag so much on The Last of Us, at least the first one. The second one I get the, the hate to some extent. Uh, but I, I love the gameplay of The Last of Us 1. It was, it was a survival game. You're not expected to do combos and stuff, but I like the gameplay. I like how Ellie intervenes in certain scenarios, you know, and like you have to adapt. You have to throw a brick at a player or something. I never really understood the hate The Last of Us got. It, it, I, I like the combat of the game. It's just, it's a different combat. I'm not expecting it to be a hack and slasher, but what's so bad with having a good story? That's what I mean. Like this, I feel like this guy just hates story. Like he just, <laughs> he just wants gameplay. But okay, I'm a veteran. I'll pick hard. I want a challenge. Wait, what? I'm mashing R1 to cut a tree? Why? Why isn't this just a nicely directed cutscene? I guess I'm supposed to feel like I'm the one doing this? Okay, now we're walking. Walking. Oh, really? Press the left. <laughs> Thank you. That is pretty Boat. obvious. Rowing. Walking. Can I move faster? No. Can I go over there? No. Just gotta hold up. Holding up. Walking. All right. So, Grieving over my dead wife. So, okay. So the game starts off with an introduction to the story. It's not just gameplay. That's what I mean. Like God of War 1 jumped straight into gameplay because that was like... The story was good, but that was like the driving force behind people buying the game, I guess, right? God of War 2018 is changing that. It's also about the story. Like they're making, they're taking advantage of these characters and be like, hey, 
wouldn't it be interesting to, you know, find out what happened to Kratos, the guy who killed an entire pantheon? What would happen if sentries pass, you know, and then he has a kid or something? Like, what's so bad about that? <laughs> I don't understand. My second wife? Who was this woman? God, so dramatic with all the music. They're really trying to sell that this game is serious. <laughs> Here we get the gist of the story. We meet Kratos' idiot son, who immediately- I freaking knew it! I freaking knew he hated Atreus! I just- I knew it! How can he say he's his idiot son, okay? He's already calling him an idiot son. Atreus has, has spoken like three words at, at most at this point, and he already hates him. I'm telling you, this guy saw e the, the E3 2016 demo and made up his mind. He's like, no matter what this game does, I'm gonna hate it just because it has Atreus in it, okay? And this might just be an old sentiment of like AI uh, companions in games with Resident Evil 4 that they, they truly were a hindrance, right? But Atreus isn't, at least in a game. You may not like him as a character, right? I think he's fine. I don't think he's the most interesting character in the series, but I think he's interesting enough, right? But from a gameplay point of view, like he doesn't get in the way of that. Same with Ellie from The Last of Us, the Last of Us 1. They don't get in the way, but these people have like this Resident Evil 4 mentality of, I forgot the girl's name, uh, the president's daughter, of being like, oh, help me, help me. Like, it's it's not, games are not like that anymore. Anyway, let's continue. Proves he's an idiot by grabbing a hot blade from the top of a fire. So my son and I are going to climb the highest mountain to spread the ashes of a woman that I don't know in the slightest. Didn't even see her face or a flashback. Great motivation. You can't... I don't understand. You you can't just you can't you, you can't put yourself in the shoes of the characters. Like your wife and the kid's mother just died. You can't comprehend that. It's not like metaphysical concepts that is like, "Oh, why should I care about this?" It's like you have a mom. <laughs> I have a mom. I I I have a mom. I have a mother. I understand what this would be like to some extent, right? Like you can't sympathize a little bit. I I don't understand. Picking up some stuff from the ground, walking, can I swing this axe on my back? No. Wouldn't want to let the player break the immersion of this walking scene. This is just so... Uh. But you know what? Fine. Okay. Long intro. Serious tone. I like some serious games. I love Metal Gear Solid 1 and the original Silent Hills. And I'm not opposed to a total reinvention of a series. If it's good, I can give this a chance. Moving along, interesting place we're in. Ooh, what's over there? Maybe there's an item in there. X, pressing X. Come on, jump. Hmm, how do I jump? Menu, controls. I can't jump? There's no jump button? Wow, forget about double jumping. I can't single jump. Oh my god. How do I get over this crevice if I can't jump? Circle? Oh, it's an interact button for stupid people, which causes Kratos to auto-jump Uncharted style. Suddenly, the entire series flashes before my eyes. All those memories of platforming, the exploration, the vertical level design, aiming and timing your jumps, the fast climbing, air juggling enemies, balancing sections, all gone in an instant replaced with an auto jump that requires no skill. You can't fail. You will never ever miss a jump and fall in this game. Just hit the button and watch Kratos jump for you. In this is something that I think I've changed my mind on, I guess, uh, the whole no jumping thing. Maybe jumping could come back. I just don't think it's gonna be like, like the old school God of War games. It's never gonna be double jump, at least with this type of game. like. This camera angle, it's never going to be double jump or it's never really going to be used to make super long combos. But I do think he's right. Like, they do need to add some variety when it comes to traversal a little bit. I, I would agree with him on that. Interact button over the tree. Again, no timing or skill involved. Uh, I'm getting worried. I've been walking around in the woods for like 10 minutes doing nothing. But relax. We can still save this experience. It's God of War, and Corey Barlog, the director of God of War 2, my favorite in the series, is back. It's gonna be great. This is just the start, a slow start. Now, what's this here? Okay, I can throw the axe. 
and recall it with triangle. Cool. So an axe. At least you like that. The combat approach, up close and personal. Very cool. I like it. I like the weapon change. We got our first enemy, 15 minutes into the game, and we finally get to fight something. Let's go. Looks like our attacks are similar to the classics. Good. Light and heavy. But holding heavy doesn't launch into the air. Makes sense. Kratos has forgotten how to jump in his old age. <coughs> and there's no grab. Wow. Significant parts of the combat system have been gutted. Okay, give him a little of this, a little of that. Wait, what did he say there? Been Air combat and grabs are absent, grounded melee and weapon throwing only. Yeah, um, I think even... Oh, what's the guy's name? I forgot the guy's name. It's the combat, it's the lead combat designer, Michael. Anyway, the lead combat designer of God of War 2018 and... Or God of War Ragnarok. Did a GDC talk on the grab button thing. And I think originally they were going to have one, but I'm forgetting the reason why he decided to opt out of it. So it's not it's not this narrative that game developers are stupid, right? It's just that there's a reason behind all of this, right? And maybe you disagree, maybe you don't. I I think I missed the the, the grab button as well. I think it would have been interesting. Uh, I just forgot what was the reason behind the the lead combat designer. Got it. Okay, give him a little of this, a little of that. Okay, not bad. Throw the axe for a light hit, target the legs, throw it with heavy and it freezes them, and then I use my bare hands. Got it. Now there's a sidestep to counter attacks. Okay, that's a little awkward for me, but I got Why? It. It's cool. Why is that awkward? Why? I, I don't I don't know why, but hack, sure. Hack, dodge, hack, 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 dodge. Right. Throw, recall, hack, hack, dodge. Wait, is this it? Is this all there is? Okay. All right. I, I hope he doesn't just take like an ex, uh, a part of the the intro to talk about the combat. I hope he talks about it like when he's more leveled up. Because, yeah, at the beginning, this is all you do. But you can do <laughs> plenty of other stuff in the game, okay? There's tons of cool moves with the axe, man. I really do think the axe is my favorite weapon of all time. And I do like the combat system, it just needs to be tweaked a little bit. But with the axe, you can mark enemies and throw the axe and it goes attacking everybody. You can spin it around like, what is he talking about? This is the intro, of course you're not gonna have all the moves unlocked, just like in God of War 1. But even that, like you can do, it's a different combat, he's just expecting it to be a hack and slasher. Like this, this what I like about the combat of this game is that it's about you managing like like the, the environment right it's like oh you have four droggers right with one of them you freeze him right you throw the axe and you freeze him in place with the other ones you attack him when he's thawing you pull the axe back it knocks one of the droggers on the legs and knocks him down you continue to beat him down it's more about you managing like the area it's not about doing combos and all that it's not about being fast it's just about being smart i don't know i see that i'm not Gaining orbs or XP, is combat not tied to an upgrade system? Am I just hacking and dodging and auto climbing ledges and collecting silver on the ground? Suddenly my heart sinks deeper into my chest as I start to fear that this is it for the whole game. And by the way, there is no magic. No Spartan army or summoning the souls of Hades. Just powers for your axe. A couple cool ones, sure, but most of them are fairly boring. They're all just ice-themed or axe-themed because it's an ice axe. <laughs> you have to equip different abilities all the time, which is tedious. You can only use two out of the many that you'll find. So instead of a carefully crafted experience focused around certain magic abilities, they give you a ridiculous amount of customization options for powers to do whatever you want. They shove so much crap into the game with armor and abilities and blah, blah, blah. Can't you just design the game well around awesome items? Does everything have to be a huge open world where you run around collecting things and talking to strangers and hunting for items? Do you have to give me 40 different kinds of armor for my wrists? I'm, I'm with him there. 
you guys know this. I I don't like the armor. Like I I do like the um, the runic attacks. Again, much like with the puzzles, I think like there's a maybe like what they can do in God of War Ragnarok is combine both of them. Like after runic attacks, because they do add, they give you that RPG, you know, RPG dream of just customizing your character however however you like, even his movesets, right? So yeah, I like um, Blessing of the Frost. Other people might like Theatsi's talent or something, right? So they can customize it. But I do think you should have like other magic attacks like like the older games, like I think those are cool, like and maybe could come back. Although it might make the combat system a little bit too convoluted, but I agree with them. I I hate the armor system. I just I I don't find this interesting. Look at all this reading, dude. I I really don't care for this, and I don't know. <laughs> I'm with them 100% here. I don't like the armor. The last thing I want to do in a God of War game is sit in the inventory for 15 minutes, yeah, scrolling through I agree. armor statistics. It actually betrays the philosophy of this game, I think. Because this game is about, you know, being one shot from beginning to end. You finish, you start the game and you finish it. It's, it's one continuous shot, except when you have to go into the menus. I think menus, I, I really hate menus and games in general. And that's one of the things I missed about old God of War games is the simplicity. These games are more, they have a lot more things in them. But the older games, it's like you go in a menu, you hold X and you level up your, your weapon. That's all you do. You don't have to read stats or anything like that. But I know... This is one of the things the God of War community hates me for. Like, one of the things they hate about my opinion of God of War 2018. I, I, I wouldn't mind the RPG systems being dialed down a little bit, or at least making them more easy to understand. Let's talk a little more about the magic. In the originals, you had to refill your magic meter by finding blue chests. This meant that on harder difficulties, you had to be very wise about when you used it, especially since they give you less. Magic could really help you in a fight. But you didn't want to just use it all, because maybe in the next room, there's an even bigger fight. And if there's no magic chest from here to there, you're going to go into that fight with an empty magic meter. And that's a bad place to be. So again, strategy, resource management. Compare that to this game, where your special abilities recharge for free. And as you level up, and your abilities get more powerful, they recharge even faster. Yeah, I think something else that I agree with him, like the whole recharging thing. God of War Ascension was the game, the first game in the series that started doing that. And I didn't like it in Ascension, and I'm not sure I like it in God of War 2018 either. There's even uh, a talisman in the game that refreshes all of your attacks. I'm like, this is so cheap, dude. Because if you have like the final, um, the final attack, I forgot what it's called. I think it's Thamur's Breath where he holds the axe uh, up and like the souls just swirl around and kill everybody in your area. That's just lame, that's just not fun. And then you press L1 and circle, at least for me it's circle, and then it refreshes that ability and you can do it again. That's not fun, I don't know, I, I agree with him on this. I don't think that's, that's very fun. Um, but again, the gameplay designer said that they didn't wanna add the chess like in the older games because he found out that players would end up hoarding the magic and never using it, right? He wanted people to interact with the magic, so uh, they decided to go with a cooldown. So again, there's a reason behind why they did things the way they did. It's not just like, ah, whatever, throw in some cooldowns and that's it. There's a reason for it. I just think that maybe in God of War Ragnarok, it needs to be... That talisman of refreshing your, your, uh, your moves, get rid of that. That is poison, I think. I, I don't like that one bit. And make the cooldowns slower, I think. I think that would be the best thing to do. So you can always feel comfortable using them, because they'll be back in a minute. Exactly. If yeah. you really want to break things, you can find the Talisman of Unbound Potential, which instantly refreshes Exactly, your yeah! <laughs> that one, yeah. abilities. So walk into a fight, use all your abilities, drop the electric spell to stun everyone, refresh your abilities, and use them again. Fight over! And as you're fighting, you get XP at random. This is perhaps my greatest complaint about the game. There's no reason to play with any style, and no reason to keep your offense going, because there is no combo meter. No combo meter to reward you for playing well and playing flashy. The only objective in New God of War is to kill all the enemies as quickly and efficiently as possible. It makes the combat so dull and repetitive and limited, because the XP I'm earning is not dependent on how well I perform. All you're gonna do in this game is mindlessly hack at the enemies, sidestep, 
and hit with your best attacks. No grabs, no air juggles, no risk reward. See? The creativity is entirely absent. And since the fights are mostly staged in similar ways to the originals, it just feels like the same old fights, but with a huge amount of limitations. Plenty of reviewers said asinine things like, finally God of War has a deep combat system instead of just being a button masher. Hey, the original's combat was way deeper than this hacking and dodging crap. Anyone who says the original games were just mindless button mashing, I dare you to pick up the originals but see, on the hard difficulty. But see, we go back to the whole thing of like my wife not wanting to do combos in God of War 1. He's doing the same thing with this game. He can he's leveled up now. He can do plenty more things in the combat with the combat, but he's just not doing it. His argument is that the game is not teaching you making a good job of making you want to do these things, right? But I, I, I'm going to have to disagree with him. I, I honestly think it all boils down to the inclusion of Atreus. I really do. I don't think that he likes the story at all, and he just has a boring experience with it. It's the same thing that happened with me in uh, Devil May Cry 3. I just, I didn't care about the world. I just, I didn't care about Dante, the story. It just, it wasn't really interesting to me. And I'm pretty sure I played the whole game with square, square, triangle, 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 right? But that's not how you play the game. You can do a lot of things. You got guns, you got other weapons, you, you can do plenty of combos, right? But I didn't do that. Even though the game did a good job of teaching me, I wasn't engaged in the world. And that's, I think, what happens with him. He just doesn't like the Norse Pantheon. He doesn't like Atreus. He doesn't like this new somber Kratos who's, you know, who's wanting to change his life. So he's bored with, with the story. Therefore, he's bored with combat. He's just, he's just only doing R1, R1, R1. It's the same thing my wife did or Titan or Chaos difficulty, and never play defensively. See how far you get. Try playing without intelligently using your multi-hit attacks and grab. See, right there, again, right there, when the, the elf thing was doing that thing, spinning his staff thing, the game is signaling you that he's gonna spawn some more enemies. If you were truly engaged in the combat, what you would do is step back, throw the ax at him, and then go to another enemy. Like, prevent him from doing that. But he's not doing that, he just, he just, waiting for it just so it can seem tedious i think this video is a little bit misleading to be honest and magic and see how fast you can upgrade your weapons good luck and yes those old games were designed to be played on higher difficulty once you mastered the combat the combat was the main feature and it was super rewarding to replay on those punishing difficulty levels and the fact that they included those punishing difficulty levels in the new game is an acknowledgement of that but they did it without including the rich and fun combat system. How could they screw this up so bad? Now, let's talk about the camera. Corey Barlog, the genius director of God of War 2, insisted on this camera style. The cinematic camera is now gone in favor of this so-called immersive over-the-shoulder camera. This isn't immersive. This is immersive. I'm absorbed in the architecture and color of the setting. I have total freedom of movement. I don't have to worry about moving the camera as I fight. I can admire the glory of my rampage and constantly see Kratos' rage as he murders and the music swells behind me. Not this. This is tedious. I'm oh, see, that's misleading right there. See, this is what I mean. Like, he purposely... He recorded all this footage. He purposely went up against the door so the camera would pull even closer to him. Like th this clip right here is so misleading. This is not what this is not how you're going to be fighting most of the time in the game. So, hold on. Not this. This is Yeah, I th 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 there you go. See, like he 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 wanted to have this shot. That's what I don't like about this video so far. It it's it's a little bit misleading. He's telling people, oh, the camera gets in the way. The camera doesn't get in the way. It really doesn't. I don't mind the camera at all. It's, it kind of feels like those people who complained about, uh, I think, yeah, Resident Evil 4. Resident Evil 4 changed the camera as well from previous Resident Evil games, right? And some fans hated it. Some other people loved it. It was like, how do you do a horror game? Th that was a question the director of Resident Evil 4 had. How do you do a horror game with the camera that you can move around, right? Like, with, because the, the argument was that Previous Resident Evil games, you could, it was fixed, the camera was fixed, so they could tailor, not tailor, they could have jump scares, they could have like more cinematic effect, right? And while I do love the old school God of War camera, this is a thing of the past. Games just sadly 
or you know for for the better just don't have fixed camera angles anymore this is a thing of the past i don't think he's ever going to see this if we were to get a god of war game that's more hack and slasher it'd be more like devil may cry 5 like you would still control the camera right but what he did right there like going up against the wall and doing that move that's completely misleading the music swells behind me not this this is tedious by the way like at least god of war 1 had a lot of camera issues as well so again like he's just kind of twisting information there as well i god of war 1 had a lot of camera issues it got way better in god of war 3 but it's still you have the same problem in both games i'm staring at the back of his head for 95 percent of this game i'm aiming kratos with controls designed for a shooter see see what i mean see he's what he's doing oh my god look i i i was okay with this guy at first but now he's starting to piss me off because what he's doing there again, he's going up against the wall and the camera has no choice but to zoom in on him, okay? So he's telling his viewers that the camera gets in the way, which is, it's not true. If you don't go up against the wall, it doesn't do that. It, it will happen if you do, but no one plays like that. And I can't see? see. Seriously, look at my vision range here. I can see one or two enemies while there are multiple enemies behind me. Where are they? What are they doing? God of War Originals, not a problem. The camera view lets you see all around you. If someone is gonna attack, you react accordingly. But in this game, they change the camera to show only what's in front of you while keeping the surrounding combat scenarios of the originals. This does not work gets better in areas like corridors because this control scheme is suited for shooters like Gears or Uncharted or the new Tomb Raider. But significant amounts of combat are presented in open areas with enemies attacking from all directions. The only way to know if an attack is incoming is, you guessed it, on-screen indicators. <laughs> oh. uh, I, I want to see what he says about them first because, look, I don't, I think they work, they serve their purpose, but I do think they're ugly. That's kind of my opinion on it. Like the indicators, I think they're, they're really ugly. And for an example of how games should be, I always look to Dead Space. I think Dead Space is brilliant in the sense that the HUD is part of the game as well. Like your health, it's not really a health bar, it's a little thing he has on his back. And I think all games should move towards that, like that complete immersion, like everything you need for the gameplay is part of the story and the world as well, right? And God of War does a good job with Mimir as well. Like, if you're listening to Mimir, he'll tell you, watch out, brother, behind you, right? So maybe, like, if they would change, like, these indicators to something that's more related to the story, I think it could work. But I don't know what he's going to say about them, but I do think they work. Like, the red one, you're about to get hit, so you better move. They work, right? It's just that they're kind of ugly. Oh, how I hate on-screen indicators. So not only is my playing freedom restricted by being forced to constantly adjust the camera, but now I also gotta be following indicators flying around the screen and changing colors. There are enemies behind me doing something. I have no idea what, I can't see them. And that one's one about to shoot you. gonna attack me. Which enemy? That was... Which attack? <laughs> Who knows? How should I react? Jump. F I can't. I guess I'll just roll and hope that I don't roll into something like a wall or another enemy that's running at me. It would be nice if I could see. There's also no universal block, so you can only block what's in front of you. Not good when so many attacks come from off screen. It creates a difficulty that comes from not being able to see what you're doing. And that is not the kind of difficulty that makes for a fun challenge in a beat em up game. Survival horror, sure. But not this. When I finish a fight in New God of War, I don't think, yeah, I f did it. Bring on the next fight. I think, God, I'm so glad I don't have to do that anymore. I don't I don't know. I, I, I didn't have those issues with him. Like, I always understood where the enemies were. I don't know. I, I just, I didn't. That's all I have to say about this point. I didn't have that issue. I don't know. Because there's no sense of focus. You're swinging the camera around the whole time and it just gets exhausting keeping track of everyone. And by the way, what's with the HP of these enemies? 
they seem to take a little too long to kill in the early game. And I'm just hacking away, using the same attacks over and over. They take longer to kill because the action is now focused on fighting single enemies up close. But it's too much. It's boring. They need to die faster and maybe up the number of enemies. But then we could end up with even more problems of enemies attacking you from off screen. You can spend an eternity staring into the void of monotony as you're mashing the attack button and dodging against but, higher level enemies. Well, I mean, yeah. Um, I kind of understand his point here. He shouldn't be fighting this enemy right now, first of all. But I kind of agree that that's kind of lame. Like, if you see an enemy, you should be able to fight him. Again, I'm someone who likes to move away. I just like to move away from RPGs. I'm with him at this point. I prefer mechanics. I prefer to learn the patterns. I don't want I don't want enemies to be like this big, big sponge where you can just put your hits into, right? I, I, I want them to be interesting. And I think God of War still succeeds because the enemies are interesting enough mechanically. Like this, the travelers are super fun to fight. Like they they do so many moves and you really do have to learn their pattern, right? But when you get a higher level one, it is kind of boring just hacking away at their health, right? Honestly, I, I kind of like it, okay? Because it's more of a challenge, and I, that's why I like the Valkyries, right? They're a challenge, and I just keep at it. But I do get it that it can be tedious. Hey, if you're having too much trouble in the fights, change it to normal. Well, that makes the game bad for a whole other reason. On normal difficulty, sure, the enemies have less HP, but your attacks do so much stun that the game literally does turn into a button masher. You don't have to do anything intelligent to defeat them. You can just screw around and make it through. And if the game eventually gets way too easy on hard, just imagine how normal it's gonna be. So either play normal and mash your way through, or play hard and make every fight a long, boring grind until you get overpowered. Pick your poison. I'm, I'm honestly bored bored of just watching him play like that because that's not how you play the game That's just not you have to throw the axe. You have to freeze enemies. You have to use your fists, right? There's a number you use your rage use your magic He's just he recorded this to show that the game is boring not to show to You know to kind of twist the, the thing about the game is like oh this game is truly boring I could do the same thing with God of War 1. I really could. I could do the square, 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 square supremacy thing. I don't do that. That's not how I play the game. And this is not how you should play the game either. But hey, look, I don't I don't blame him. He's not interested in the world or the characters. But, oh, my PS4, my PS5 went out. That, all right, the light's going to be As a little sucky. Progresses and you level up, the enemies become pretty easy to cut through. And the game starts to trick you into thinking you're having fun. But you're not really. You think you're having fun because you're not as stressed. Around the time you get inside the mountain, the pacing of the game picks up, and I found some pretty decent fights there. But if you stop and think about it, you're not actually excited by what you're doing. And you don't feel like you're accomplishing anything because there's really no reward or motivation. And there's so much health on the ground that you can always heal. And if you die, you come back with full health even if you didn't start the fight with it. Don't worry about using all your runic powers, they recharge. Don't worry about finishing a fight with low health, just die and come back with 100%. Don't worry about playing poorly, you earn the same XP regardless. This sucks. It sucks so much that the game has to constantly reward you with little pieces of loot to make you feel excited. The combat isn't enough on its own and it should be. Instead of feeling good about saving resources and taking little damage, in this game it's just, okay, the fight is over. I hope I get to pick up lots of shiny things on the ground. The brutal kills are still here, as they're a staple of the series, but they're not as satisfying because you feel too separated from them. They felt earned in the originals. You had to wear them down enough to get that floating icon, and then you could go through the quick minigame to tear them apart. But violence wasn't the only reason. There was a purpose behind it all. Health or magic, uh, area of effect explosions, orb bonuses, or your combo meter. There was a lot of variety, and sometimes it granted multiple grab options. Isn't that so much more interesting than just mash the stun attacks until this boring enemy dies? I do think I agree with him on that. I, I do think like 
the game should move away from like the whole picking up things like shiny objects. I kind of agree with them. Um, I do miss that about the older games. Like Minotaurs always gave you health. Uh, Medusas always gave you magic. Like there was like a formula that you had to learn with time, right? The same could the same could they could do the same with God of War Ragnarok. I think you know like if you finish a uh, Draugr like that, you get rage or something. Like it, there's it's more like. It needs to flow better. That's what I mean. Like, the, the combat needs to be tweaked. I'm not saying that. I'm sure he's going to get eventually to the whole jumping thing. Like, he wants double jump back and all that. Because that's what he said in the Ragnarok video. But I think what they honestly need to do in God of War Ragnarok, I think for the combat, yeah, they need to add other weapons, which they're doing with the shields and possibly Mjolnir. But they need to, I think, add environmental take that. Env environmental kills, I think. Like, you need to be able to manage the environment as well. Like, there's um, there's a section right after you meet Brock that's one of my favorite in the games, like, when it comes to combat scenarios. Because you're in this cave, and in the ceiling, there's a... Uh, the ceiling is covered in spikes, right? And you have to use your axe to, you know, bring it back up, right? Bring the, the ceiling back up. But if you wanted to, you can pull away the, the axe, and the, the ceiling goes down and kills all the draugers, right? That's interesting. I kind of like that. It puts pressure on me to do other things. But it's not about doing combos. It's, again... It's about, like, you managing the environment and the enemies in it. Uh, but I think he disagrees with that. Speaking of enemies, do you see anything in common with these designs? Did I mention that every one of them is just a dude? Pretty much. Dude. 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 Blue dude. Yellow dude. Archer dude. Hammer dude. Flying dude, Valkyrie dude, <laughs> a dog, a wolf, a monkey. So, <sighs> I miss the Cerberus. Uh, okay, wait, 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 hold on. so yeah, I, I get it. Like, there's Draugrs and Hellwalks and all that, but he doesn't like the the ogres. The ogres are pretty fun. They're like the Cyclops. And if you if you stun them, you can ride them just like in God of War three. I don't know what his deal is i do i do agree that the game needs to add more vari variety to enemies and that's that's one of the few things that have convinced me that maybe god of war 2018 is not the best in the series completely because there's a lot of things that could have been better right but I, I agree enemy variety like needs to be improved in the next game but the ones that are there i love them i love the travelers i love the hell walkers i love droggers the uh, revenants not so much but it just it needs more of them i think but anyway the gorgons the Minotaurs, the Wraiths, the Centaurs, the Satyrs, <laughs> the Cyclops, the Chimera that's part snake, part lion, part ram. The Chimera is the best enemy in the series. I will give him that. It really is because it's got three stages. I love the Chimera so much. I would love something like that in God for Ragnarok where it's like you kill the 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 snake first and you kill the goat and, and the patterns of the attack changes i love the chimera it's my top one enemy in the series all that fantastical creature design i guess some more outlandish monsters would detract from the serious and mature tone they were going for Well, she blames me in large measure for her present circumstances, and not totally without reason. It all goes back to the long war between the Aesir and Vanir. Prior to that, wars for the Aesir were easily won, but the Vanir had proved their equal and exacted devastating damage. Both sides suffered tremendous losses, and for many of us, quite frankly, war was simply no fun anymore. Even the bosses are just dudes. The trolls? Oh, the troll battle. This is when things start getting obviously bad. This is supposed to feel like an epic fight, but my god is it boring. There's not enough attack variety to make this interesting, and he has so much HP that it feels like it goes on forever. What's worse is that this troll fight is copy-pasted all through the game over and over and over. I'm, I'm tired of talking about this because they're not boss fights. They're like the Cyclops of the new game. But I get it. You know, the team ran out of uh, 
uh, money and time. So yeah, like instead of a boss fight in Helheim, they did have a troll. I get that same in Tears Temple. I, I am with him. I, I, God of War 2018 should have had more more boss battles, especially like given the size of the game. Every time he shows up in whatever form, you just think, God, really? This game suffers from a severe lack of interesting enemies and boss encounters. The boss fights are mediocre to poor. Right, he chooses the worst one, the the freaking elf, like the dark elf. Like that's the boss fight. The boss fight he chooses to to use as an example. Great the fight is epic at times, even if it revolves around a dull story. Thor's sons are kind of fun. The dragon. Kind of fun. What are you <laughs> Thor's sons are super fun. Like if especially if you play them in a harder difficulty, they're super amazing. Like you have to learn their patterns and crap. They're super cool, and like you have to manage them again it's about managing like you can't just kill one and then go to the other you kind of have to switch in between and they all have different th magni and modi are awesome boss fights what are you talking about nah. you hack at his toes and throw balls at him it's more of a set piece than a boss fight Ugh. And it's not is he really saying that is he is he really saying that it's more of a set piece than a boss fight god of war 3 had plenty of those and there wasn't anything wrong with that are you really calling Kronos uh, a boss fight Kronos was more of a level same with Poseidon he's a boss fight but for the most part he's a level that's what I mean this guy's he's a little bit inconsistent you know it's not like the dragon is an antagonist of the story it's just a random monster that you gotta fight <laughs> Technically impressive, yes, but really nothing of consequence to the story. And this wouldn't have been so bad if there had been some awesome fights around this. But no, this dragon fight should have felt huge like Kronos or the Colossus. Uh, these boss fights suck. It's just a bunch of troll clones and bosses that are overly simple and leave the action for the cutscenes. It's either a guy my size or something so big that it's impractical to actually fight. After 20 hours of this game, you finally have another confrontation with Balder, and instead of designing a good fight, it's literally just two full minutes of mashing R1 and turning left and right. It's nothing. But at this point, are you surprised? There's no emotional connection to any of these boss fights either, or any fight in the entire game for that matter. There are no epic, bone-chilling moments like these. I am not the same man you found that day. The monster you've created has returned to kill you. God after God will deny you, Kratos. They will, they will protect Zeus. Zeus must live so that Olympus will prevail. If all on Olympus will deny me my vengeance, then all on Olympus will die. It's a different type of cool moment. It's 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 a, it's a different it's, it's a different type of tone. That's what he's not getting. The old the older games were just about being Hulk, like Corey said. It's just the Hulk, you know. Like you get these amazing moments, and that's that's why it changes the music. The mo the music in the older games is more epic because it's more about like revenge. It's anger. It's only one tone, right? The cool moments in this game are different. Like this line, he's this line. Curse is gonna say to Balder right now. This line is bone chilling to me. Like he's like, "This path you walk, vengeance, you will find no peace." I love that line. And if I were to do like a top ten God of War cutscenes, like this, this would be one of them. Getting the blades, Kratos telling Atreus what he did to his father. It's it's just different. It's a different type of epic, but it doesn't mean that it's not epic. That's what he's not getting. I couldn't care less about this mother and son drama that has nothing to do with me, especially when it's told to me in little tiny fragments with many hours between them. I'm just killing these enemies because they're in my way. Oh, wait, finally. After traversing this dreary underworld level, do I get to fight that giant death bird? It was cut from the game because they didn't have time or resources. This is this is understandable game development. This happens all the time. The Icarus wings were cut from God of War 1. 
and it's, it's, there's many things. It's just maybe he just didn't know it at the time, but that's what's that was that that's what was gonna happen with this bird. I'm telling you, under the mayo, there's gonna be more boss fights in the next next game. I promise you, dude. Do I? No. Screw you. Here's another troll. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, I get the pain. So I'm annoyed. I'm bored, and I'm frustrated. Sorry. And you know what else? You know what makes this so much worse? This little puñetas right here. What did I tell you? What did I tell you? I knew it. I freaking knew it. The moment he saw Atreus in, in uh, E3 2016, he just didn't like the game. He just didn't, okay? Oh my god, here we go. He will not shut up. You know what the original God of War series really needed? An eight-year-old boy incessantly screaming, Father, look out, behind you, find a healing stone. And he never f***ing stops. His voice enters your brain like a parasite, and you start playing sloppier because you're annoyed by him on top of the awful, boring combat. On my first playthrough, I was playing on hard, so I was having to repeat a lot of fights in the early game. <laughs> and his complaining was so annoying that before every fight, I had to go into the option menu, turn the dialogue volume all the way down, just so I could fight in peace. And then, after the fight, go back to the menu, turn it back up so I don't miss the story. Because Kratos and Atreus talk all the f***ing time about dumb shit that I don't care about. There you go. There you go. Under the Mayo doesn't care about the story in games. He really doesn't. That's why he like that's why one of his favorite games is Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal has an amazing combat. But let me let me give you a little secret, okay? Let me let me let me give you something. Let me, let me tell you something, okay? Even though Doom Eternal has an amazing combat, it's forgettable, okay? Cuz it's just that. It's just like it's a good combat system. That's all it's got, okay? Why do you think people are so excited for God of War Ragnarok? It's because of the story. They care about these characters. They care about Atreus' next chapter. See, he's talking about... I don't know what he's talking about right here, but I love all of these conversations, at least on the first playthrough. On a second playthrough, and especially when I'm streaming, yeah, like, all of these conversations can get annoying, but that's what the older God of War games don't have. It's a character next to you, so, can, so there can be an actual story. And this is, oh, you know what? I can prove this to you, okay? David Jaffe, the creator of the God of War series, okay, told me in my interview that when they were thinking about doing the God of War movie, it was going to be mostly the same. It was going to be more the, the, the same as God of War 1, right? The only difference was going to be that the character of the Oracle was going to be in the entire movie. And you know why is that? <laughs> it's because they need two characters so they can talk, so there can be a story. I mean, it, it, it was the God of War story, but, you know, they, I want to say the Oracle was, was made to be more of a side, not a sidekick, but a companion. So I guess because in the writer wasn't wrong. He's like in a game, it's fine to have Kratos go traipsing around by himself, but I need somebody to have dialogue with Kratos so we can have words. So if, if he doesn't like Atreus, the whole thing falls apart. Cause yeah, like Atreus is kind of like. He's an important character, but you know what? That's okay. I don't like you, kid. Go away. For the love of God, Santa Monica Studios, please give us a patch with a separate option to mute the boy during combat. It's not like we need to worry about protecting him. He's just there for us to spam his arrows. Mindlessly, by the way. The electric arrows turn the game's combat into a complete joke. I agree. I think the, the arrows need to be nerfed a little bit. I agree with them. These things get so out of control that every encounter is just activate electric spell, shoot electric arrows, use runic attacks, and clean up the rest. Look at this. I'm playing on hard, and all I have to do is spam the electric arrows and mash attacks, and nearly every encounter turns into a broken mess. The only way around this is to play on the expert difficulty which is a living nightmare for the first few sections. It eventually delivers a few more good fights, but then degenerates into the same spam fest for the most part. Great design, guys. Atreus is even worse because he doesn't talk like he belongs in this game. 
This is supposed to be set in Old Norse mythology, the times of Odin and Thor, but Atreus's English is way too modern. <laughs> Take that? That's what you get? There's no way anyone would say that. There's no way the son of Kratos would speak like that. This kid even says whatever when he gets pissy. Whatever. Whatever. That's whatever. Whatever. It says don't wake him. Whatever. That's okay. Again, that's misleading right there, okay? That's only in one section of the game where Atreus gets gets cocky after he learns he's a god. But he under the mayo didn't say that. He just said like, "Oh, whenever he doesn't whatever." He says whatever, right? It's like that's not the case. It's only in that section, and that section is supposed to annoy you. Like even all the things you learned up to with him up to that point in the story like don't work when you tell him to shoot the arrows, he doesn't do it. And I think it's awesome. I think it's an awesome way of mixing story with gameplay at the same time. But he didn't say that. He just said that that's the whole game. Like, he didn't say that, but he alluded to it. And that's what I don't like about this video. I swear this kid is about to pull out a skateboard and sunglasses. <laughs> he starts mocking the way Kratos talks and basically turns Kratos into a joke himself. Because Kratos is so one note through the entire game that he's like a parody. Let me guess. You're gonna be smug and say you told me we shouldn't get involved. Boy, read this. I said... The only time you care to talk to me is when you need me to translate for you. If mom was here... If your mother was still alive, we would not be here at all. I love the interactions between Kratos and Atreus. I really do. Because it, 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 it's, it's, it truly is a challenge for Kratos. He's, like, he's used to killing trolls, sorry, cyclops and gods. But he doesn't know how to raise a kid. I love that dynamic. I really do. And I will disagree with him with that, on that wholeheartedly. In the original, he had a much wider expression of emotion. No, nope. <laughs> it's just only rage. What is he talking about? It was only rage. Just monotone and somber from beginning to end. What are you doing, boy? There comes a moment where the kid almost becomes tall. What are you doing, boy? This, this is what I mean. Boy. This is what I mean. I would love to have a talk with him. I really would, okay? Because this is misleading right here, okay? Why did he put this thing here? He's not telling you that this is what happens in the entire game, but that's what he, he's alluding to. This happens sometimes, okay? But you, when you're in combat, Atreus is perfect. He doesn't do any of this, okay? This just happens, for the most time, off screen. But he captured this moment. It's like, oh, I'm going to use this clip and tell my audience that this happens all the time, which it doesn't. It's the same thing with the camera. This video overall is very misleading in his critique of the game. There comes a moment where the kid almost becomes tolerable, but once he learns that he's part God, oh my God, he becomes insufferable. That's the point. Odin's right. We are a threat. Enough about Odin and his whole stupid family. Nobody cared about him anyways. What's the difference? There are consequences to killing a God. Yeah, very monotone, huh? Do you hear me? I heard you. And these are not subjects for discussion. Do not push me, boy. Fine. Watch your tone, boy. boy. Whatever. Whatever. God, I can't express how much I hate this fucking kid. And it boggles my mind that so many publications insist that there's a deep emotional bond between Kratos and Atreus that this game has a moving emotional story. The original had an emotional story. The PSP game Chains of Olympus had an emotional story. It's emotional when Athena dies at your hands. Yeah, but uh, sure, it's emotional, but it's not as, it wasn't as emotional as it should have been. And you wanna know why? Because Athena wasn't in the entire game. Like she, she didn't exist in the entire game. She talks to you in a statue once, I think. Uh, you only see her in the beginning when she talks to you in the statue, like, don't do this, Kratos. This is too important. I don't know what she said. I forgot. And then she dies. How are you emotionally invested in her death? That's what I mean. As opposed to Balder, who you see a lot more, right? Or as opposed to when Atreus says something, does something bad. Like, you're more emotionally invested because there's actual characters. In the older God of War games, there were characters. The characters were used to just get to the next part. It was just like, oh, you kill... Uh, Perseus. What's your emotion, emotional investment in Perseus, for example? There's none, right? 
at least with Magni and Modi, there's more. Like, you can hear them talk about their father and how they can't, you know, fail him. Like, there's there's more emphasis on the character. This is something you're not going to convince anybody with. It's emotional when Kratos realizes he's doomed to forever remember his past. I agree with that, yeah. It's emotional when you finally beat the living shit out of Zeus for turning his back on you, his son. But this? This little shit? that doesn't even speak like a person from this world, that moans and complains constantly, screams at me all the time while I'm trying to fight, that Kratos just calls boy for 40 hours? Get the f out of here. The only moments of real feeling in this game are the moments when Kratos is reflecting on his experiences from the other games. I haven't even talked about the story yet because I don't want to. I can barely remember. The actual story is terrible, nothing more than find a place to spread the ashes. Okay. I, I do get that, like, it, it's not as mythological as uh, as I would have liked. God of War 1 is like, get Pandora's box. God of War 2 is turn time back, stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, this was more of an emotional story, so it's like, oh, find a place to spread the ashes, I get that. But the ending, there's a payoff in the ending, I don't know, I just, I liked it. For it. There are moments, sure, where you get drawn in. I mean, it's a well-crafted game. So oh, and I should say that um, God of War Ragnarok is going to have more of that feeling of the older games in the sense that you're going to be doing something more mythological. It's not going to be about spreading phase ashes. It's going to be stopping Ragnarok, I'm pretty sure. It's going to happen. The scene where Kratos is finally alone and reflecting silently on his past is truly captivating. But these moments are few and far between. You spend way more time just running favors for people. Which is so Kratos, am I right? Go find something for this guy. Go find something for this other guy. But I fear for my captain and crew. I believe they are still under the water. Will you find them for me? The main characters are just as uninteresting as the faceless spirits in the side quests. The main boss fight in the beginning, the one you beat by mashing attack and watching long cutscenes of transitions, is against a god that doesn't feel pain because his mother, the lady in the woods, blessed him with some kind of invulnerability and immunity to pain. And he really wants to feel again. And that's about it, really. Nothing Kratos can do anything about. And the rest of it is just mythology and world building. We don't really get to know the characters in this game well. He tries to kill his mom, Kratos stops him, then you fight him, and these characters barely have any presence in the game at all. They disappear for hours. It's all so scattered. If they were more in the game, he would complain that it, it would be a walking simulator. I'm just, because he didn't talk about it because it happens very few uh, very few times. Like when Freya is, is in the game, like in the Black, Black Breath section, she walks with you back to the elevator. If there were more moments like that in the game, he would say that the game was a walking simulator. I just know it. And he's complaining now that they're not in the game enough. They Maybe. do not concern us. Exactly. Nothing concerns me. I'm as interested in what's going on as Kratos is, which is to say not at all. How? Why is Kratos even here? I'm just trying to spread the ashes of my second wife from the highest mountain with my kid. Leave me out of your boring family drama. I'm on my own boring adventure. An adventure through some of the most boring levels ever. While many locations are well-structured and intricate and impressive for a bit, I mean, how could you not be immediately impressed by the sights in this game? They quickly lose their charm. Water, rocks, grass, trees, mud, for hours. I'm so tired of walking around and rowing boats. On your first playthrough, if you're exploring all the hidden areas and dying frequently, you're gonna be looking at rocks and water for hours and hours. Yeah, I, I, again, like the, like I said before, like this is something I agree with him a little bit. Like, yeah, the the environments don't look as exciting as the older games, except Alfheim. I don't know why he didn't like Alfheim. I guess he was talking about from a, a level design perspective, which means like more gameplay focus, right? But from an environmental, you know, artistic design, it, Alfheim looks amazing. Medgard is okay in some areas. Yeah, like Thamur's body, Jormungandr, and Tyr's temple. They look interesting, but for the most part, yeah, the environment is kind of, it's too plain. I, I agree with them. And once you finally get to Alfheim, it's the same thing. 
The change of worlds is super refreshing when you finally get there, but this too fades fast as you realize it's just another color of rocks and water and more boring structures from the same camera angle, the same auto climbing and unsatisfying combat. Levels are filled with long drawn out sections of walking around, climbing, carrying things, finding pathways. Jump through this water wheel by mashing the interact button. <laughs> Can't miss time to jump and die. That, that is pretty stupid. I, I'll give you that. Like, you, you can just stand there and press X until like it, your turn is to jump. Like it, it, there's no thought involved. Just I get that. It until Kratos auto jumps. But yeah, you go 10, 15, 20 minutes without a fight, much less a good one. It's another way the game tricks you into thinking the combat is fun. They knew it was boring and that you'd realize it if there were a lot of fights. So they put an eternity of walking and rowing boats between them so you're excited to finally kill something. But you quickly become so powerful that the bland combat areas might as well not even be there. You'll find plenty of puzzles. Wait, hold on. I, as you get more powerful, fights become less and less satisfying. I think I agree with them on that as well. Because, yeah, like... You get, <laughs> I agree with that because the whole like cooldown thing, like that, that, that's a bit of a turnoff for me. Like looking at it now, it's like, yeah, you, you the cooldown is too fast and you can just spam your attacks, right? Um, the most fun I had was with the, the Valkyries, right? But I, I, I kind of agree with them on this, right? Might as well not even be there. You'll find plenty of puzzles, and while a couple of them are good, get ready to do the same puzzle again and again. Nearly every single puzzle in this game is just find the hidden thing and throw your axe at it or shoot it. Cans to open chests, stones to free the dragon where you run around aimlessly looking for the right rocks to break, which could be anywhere. The game comes to a screeching halt as you wander around looking into the distance trying to find these things. And by the 10th time you've done it, you'll start losing your mind. Could they not come up with anything better than this? The game itself knows this. Remember in The Last of Us, after like the fourth time that you have to find a way to cross the river? Ellie jokes about the repetitiveness of the puzzles. Here, Atreus does the same thing. Greatest man or tallest tree begins as any more than me. Yeah, it's see, stupid race. Being meta and joking about your repetitive puzzle design doesn't make it any better. Just I don't, make better puzzles. Again, I don't mind those. I, I really don't. I, I do like them. It's just that I, I do think they need to add more of them. But they shouldn't get rid of these ones. I, I like them. Like, they're more time-based. I love these ones. Hit the cans. Shoot the exploding things to free the chests. But that introduces another problem I have. So many chests and items that it's very common for this to happen. You find yourself in an area with some kind of puzzle. Here you have to move this glowing torch to different spots in less than 10 seconds each move. You have to explore this entire area looking for these transfer points and then babysit this thing to each one. It's easy to get disoriented because, well, there's no camera direction. You're spinning the camera all over the place. After seriously five minutes of running around these rocks and moving the torch, you finally get it to this door. Another chest. Okay, give me something good. Oh, yeah. Another grip for my blade. One hundred percent. I agree with him. Like, it it shouldn't be like this. Like, when you do like one of these big areas that have that these these big areas these big optional areas that there's a reward. The reward should be something that you can use at any point in the game, not just like very early on. Because what could happen is that. This this perk, this pummel, needs to be used like earlier in the game. But you finish the game because that's how I play like semi-open world games. I do the story first, and then I go and uh, do the optional stuff. Right? Um, what if I don't need this? I, I agree with him on this. I, what, what if I don't want it? Right? It's, it, it should be more about mechanics. It should be like, oh, you now have the boots of Hermes. You can go up certain walls and explore different areas. That would be cool. Like if there were more mechanics, me mechanical focus, I would love that. But Again, man, like, the RPG thing is a big hindrance for me. It really is. It's a good one, but I like the one I'm using. 
so I've just wasted my f***ing time. Thanks, game. Here's what they could have done. Enter an area and see that the goal of this puzzle is whatever thing. Axe pummel of blah blah blah, granting cooldown to your runic attacks. And then you could say, oh, hey, that sounds pretty good. I feel that it's worth the next 10 minutes of my time screwing around with this puzzle. That's not bad. I like that idea. It, it kind of, it, it's kind of, it, it kind of is a immersion breaking a little bit, but yeah, like if they're gonna stick with the whole like, oh, you get a pummel at the end, like that's that's not a bad idea. I, I like this. Hmm. You know what game did this perfectly? Yeah, I, I knew he liked Doom Eternal. That's that's the only video I think. That and the, the God of War reveal thing, those are the only ones I've seen. Doom 2016. When you find the rune challenges, it immediately tells you what you'll win if you complete it. Because it could take you a while to get through it, and they don't want to interrupt the flow of the game. Right from the beginning, you can say, hmm, move faster for a short time after performing a glory kill. Nah, I think I'll pass. And then move on with the f***ing game. That's how you do it. So you don't spend an eternity completing a puzzle or challenge just to get something you don't want. In God of War, you have to do all these puzzles if you want to find the stuff you want and suffer through plenty of stuff that you don't. I swear, look at all these axe puzzles <laughs> I found. And I've found all these light runic attacks. I can only use one. Look at all these enchantments. Yeah. Jesus Christ. I can only have like three or four of these equipped at any one time. I haven't used even 90% of these things. They're all so shitty or so specific as to make them virtually useless. Reduce poison damage? You almost never get poisoned in this game. Reduce burn damage? Yeah, I, I, if, I, if I were me, I would get rid of these runes. I really would. Like, this is the, the one of the worst additions in the game. I agree with them. I don't like these things at all. I don't like going through them and reading. Like he says, they're too, they're too, they're so crappy or they're so specific that they become kind of useless, you know? And like, and people say it doesn't encourage you, but essentially you do have to just go in the menu and switch them around for certain scenarios and all that, right? I don't like these. These these are a big hindrance in the game as well for me. You Sorry. almost never get burned in this game. And by the time you get them, you're already so powerful that they're obsolete. Am I expected to go into my inventory and change my enchantments and my rune attacks for every fight? Just make Kratos take less fire and poison damage as a way to level up. Don't make me equip all this stuff. You are driving me insane. <laughs> that was a nice use of music there. But hey, it looks nice, right? Man, this game is a technical marvel. It's gorgeous and feels alive. I've never seen animations so lifelike. It's too bad the gameplay and the story don't live up to the same standard. It's beautiful. And the game insists that you acknowledge that fact. It doesn't want you to not see how good it looks, leading to moments where the game forces you to walk. I knew it. This this is the moment I was talking about after the Black Breath thing. He doesn't like these sections. I don't mind them because you get some more exposition about the world and stuff. Here she talks about Ragnarok. I dearly wish I didn't like I dearly wish I didn't believe it was real. You get more character development. He doesn't like this. And he said, like, you barely see any of these characters. The one moment you see Freya, like, I I in the game, he doesn't like it. So <laughs> he's being inconsistent. Let's carry a tree. That's only in the beginning. Let's carry a pig. That's only in that section. What else is he going to say? Look at this turtle. We spent so long making this turtle look Same at section. It. Hey, I'm Kratos. You don't tell me what to look at. You don't... That's the whole point of the game. He's a changed man. That's... That's the whole point. He's he's different now. Don't tell me that I can't run in this part. The old games made me feel like I was Kratos. This one just makes me feel like I'm <laughs> controlling him. And controlling him slowly. Slowly climbing up walls when we used to fly up them. 
You could double jump and catch the wall, leap up to the ledge and slide down and be done with it. Here, you just have to press the interact button to latch on and hold up. And I agree. I, I do think the, the old school climbing was way, way better. Uh, but it, it all goes back to the whole thing Cory Barlog wanted with this game. Like it's the, the triangle or the trinity, I don't know what he called it. But it's like if the game is not serving these three points, it's not worth adding. So it was like combat, story, and exploration, I think. So what happens... Here's why I think the climbing in this game is slightly better than in the Uncharted one. Here you have Atreus to talk with. Like a lot of the climbing sections, you do a lot of exposition. So it falls into that category of story, right? Uh, as opposed to getting the gameplay. They could have chosen with gameplay or story. Corey won with story. That's debatable. I think they should have gone with gameplay as well. Um, but in Uncharted, it's just Nathan Drake climbing. So it is boring because it is, it is pretty much like on rails. It's the same here. But at least here you get the story. Why he hates it so much is because he doesn't like the story. That's that's just it. He doesn't like Atreus. They don't. They, he doesn't like the dynamic of them talking. So Wait. that's that's why for him it feels Wait, much worse than what it actually is. You've climbed about three times. You may think I'm nitpicking, but I'm not. This game is filled with an infuriating amount of brain dead climbing. Just hold up and wait. Can't jump up or slide down. Just another instance of player agency being stripped away from us in favor of this cinematic crap. And this seemingly Which minor change led to the single most frustrating time I had in the entire game my first playthrough. Enter this part of Midgard by the Hellwalker quest and go into the cave. Hold up slowly to climb the walls, <laughs> climb down the chain, and two powerful wolvers appear. You'll probably lose due to not being highly upgraded and not understanding how to fight them. And the fight is in a very constricted area. And if you die, you go back to the bottom of the wall. <laughs> you go back to the bottom of the wall. And even though I like to stick out a tough fight for as long as it takes, I was losing my mind repeatedly <laughs> climbing up. It's what I feared the most about dying. Climbing <laughs> again. There came a point where I just said, no, I am not climbing that f***ing wall again. Which brings me, finally, to the challenge realms, which are awful. Niflheim must be the worst idea in the game. Hours of tedious, boring resource grinding, where you repeatedly open chests, hundreds of them, to unlock armor that you don't even need anymore. And then there's the Muspelheim battle. I, I don't like Niflheim as much. Yeah, like I kind of liked it at first, but yeah, it is kind of tedious. I do like Muspelheim, because uh, I don't know what he's gonna say about it, but it took the the combat arena of the of the previous games and made it part of the story. I like that. I, I don't mind that. It's it's the same the same thing the older God of War games did in a new in a new and better way. I think battle trials, which are either frustrating and boring, or comically easy and boring depending on how bad you've broken the game through the terrible RPG-style leveling system. It's also a perfect example of how this game values immersion over gameplay. The original series also had these challenges, remember? And not only were they more fun and interesting, but you could easily access them from the menu. Want to play a specific trial? Just click it and it starts. How convenient! In this game, every trial is separated by three minutes of slow, pointless mountain climbing. Why? More climbing? F Maybe this is the final trial. The trial of infinite patience. <laughs> Though, I guess that's a good way to describe this entire game. So, we've looked at all my complaints. Do you feel the same way? Probably not. Everyone loved this game while I was left dumbfounded. Why did this game get so much praise? That's the question, right? Well, I think it's a few factors. One, people and critics already decided that they were going to love this game before it came out. There was so much hype around this huge return of Kratos, as there should have been. He's a special cultural icon unique in gaming. His games are great, and Cory Barlog, director of God of War 2, the best in the series, 
was back in the director's chair. It looked gorgeous, and while I was worried about the amounts of walking and talking and babysitting, I was still excited and ready to love it too. I bought it the day it came out, anxiously, and three hours in, I had my head in my hands in disbelief and disappointment. It's similar to the way I felt at the end of the new Predator film, sitting in the theater opening night. 2. People are blinded by the technical achievements. It's so beautiful and well-crafted and all the animations feel lifelike and smooth and intricate. The controls are tight, there's a real weight behind every attack as old Kratos swings his heavy axe. It has exciting moments, and it impresses with its enormousness in moments like the talking snake and staring down from the snowy mountain. 3. Or they just like it. They had fun with it, and you had fun with it too. Cool. It's not a terrible game. There are some really enjoyable sections, and it's impressive. A friend of mine told me that if it weren't called God of War, I wouldn't hate it. Look. I don't hate it. It's not terrible in every way like Silent Hill Downpour or some broken indie Steam trash game. I'm not putting this and Fallout 76 in the same category, but this could have been so much better. If it weren't called God of War, I would say that it's an incredibly impressive, mediocre game with repetitive combat, restrictive character movement, and a forgettable story. I'd say that it's decent and worth checking out because it's solidly made. It's a very complete package, obviously made with love and care, and there's not a trace of predatory microtransactions. It's a large and realized <laughs> single player experience, and that should be encouraged in this day and age. But nothing more than that. If it were its own original game with an original title, I'd say it's just all right. But as an installment in the God of War series, it goes in all the wrong directions. This game is a weird case for me because I hate so many decisions that they made, but the game is still put together really well. It's the only game that I don't actually like, but I've played like a hundred or more hours of. The game kind of hypnotizes you into playing it more and more. Even if you never feel a sense of excitement, you still feel like you have to push on. Even if you know that you're not going to find a good fight or interesting item, you feel like you have to go check out that little area on the beach. Even if the story of this game is boring, my attachment to Kratos keeps me moving. I don't know, like I said, it's a weird case. Before you accuse me of just not wanting things to change, I'm a fan of the original Resident Evils, and I really like the Resident Evil 2 remake for the most part. I'm an old school Doom 1993 fan, and Doom 2016 is one of my favorite games of all time. I'm not against games coming back and being reimagined. However, I do have a problem with stripping out what made the originals so good in the first place if you're not going to replace it with something equally good. If you were to ask me if I would recommend this game, I would say, sure. Everyone should check it out because its positives are really strong, but don't expect to be excited by the gameplay and get ready to be really bored sometimes. Look, I know that if they had just made this game exactly like the originals, it would have felt stale. I get that. I like that they attempted a new direction, but there are so many areas in which they failed. God of War 2018 removed virtually everything great about the originals and replaced it with mediocrity, pretty graphics, and self-importance. Thanks for watching my video. Whether you love this game or not, thanks for watching. This is my first video like this. Maybe I'll do another, I don't know. This is a lot of work. I apologize for the video and the audio not being of great quality. I have a cheap video capture card and I had to borrow a microphone uh, as I never expected to do something like this. Uh, like and subscribe, <laughs> share with a friend. Is this the like video it? that blew him, like the I'll blew up his channel? Because he's got a, he's got a lot of subs, like 109,000. That's pretty good. And yeah, under the mayo, congrats first of all, because dude, I did a. If you're watching this, I did a, I believe a 30 minute video or maybe 20 minute video, and that thing drained me, dude. There wasn't as, yours didn't have as many editing as mine did, but I do get the, 
you know, I understand the hard work that went into the video, so I do appreciate that. But overall, man, let me just talk to my audience, I guess. I, it's funny because I feel like within you guys, within my audience, I'm going to get a lot of hate because people really don't like me talking about how much I hate the RPG system and all that. But I, I, it's true. I don't like it. There's a lot of things I agree with under the mayor, right? But I really do think that his dislike of the game stems from the fact that he doesn't care about the story of it. Like, he doesn't care about the new Kratos. He doesn't care about uh, Atreus. He doesn't care about Freya. How can you not care about Freya? She's su su such an interesting character. Same with Odin, Thor. All of these characters, we'll, we're all interested in it. And if you're interested in the story, you're going to be interested in the gameplay a lot more. You're going to play it how it was meant to be played. Could it have been better? Yeah, I, th I think there's a lot of things that they can do to make it better. God of War Ragnarok is bringing back the grapple from God of War 3. Um, there's different shields now. I don't know how I'm going to like about that. That sounds a little too RPG for my liking. But, yeah, it's... There are other things in the video that I don't like. I do think he was... He was mis misle misleading a little bit with certain clips. Atreus getting stuck that one time. Or the camera bothering you. The camera did not bother me a single time. Like, he purposely went up to the wall with his back up against the wall, and the camera zoomed in on him. Like, that's not how you play the game. Like, that happens once, one or three times, maybe. Like, it's the same with old-school God of War games. There were camera issues. In God of War 1 especially, the camera would change super fast, changing your perspective. So, it's there's a lot of issues that go back all the way back to God of War 1. So, could it have been better? Yeah, and I'm hoping for a lot of changes as well, but... I don't know. I, I don't want it to go completely back to hack and slasher like the, these games. These games will always be special in my... Uh, will always be pe well, I can't speak now. Will always be special for me, right? But God of War 2018 was an interesting reboot. It was it was a new and a nice and new direction for the series. And I want to see what they do with it, you know, in the future. Not just God of War Ragnarok. I'm sure they're going to keep this formula for a little bit. But... Yeah, overall, I like God of War 2018. I, I, I really do, okay? I like the story. I like the, you know, what they began with the combat. There's room for improvement, but I like what they've done so far. I don't know. It's just, it's the right way to go, I think. But under the mayo, dude, if you ever, we dis we agree on a lot of things, but we also disagree on, on a lot of things. If you ever want to come by and, you know, talk with me about the game, it can be after God of War Ragnarok. It could be before. I don't, I don't mind. Um... Let's just talk. You know, it, it might be fun. I don't know. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Whoever made it all the way to the end. This video is super long. Let me see how long it is. Uh, and, oh, shit. Two hours. No one's going to watch this. But holy crap. Thank you so much for watching, you guys. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Until then, remember, go forth in the name of Ragnarok. Hmm.